In this problem, we have to find a power series representation for this function centered at c equals 1. And we also have to find the interval of convergence. The formula we're going to use in this problem is the following. If we have 1 over 1 minus x, this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And this is true if the absolute value of x is less than 1. So the goal is to rewrite our function in such a way that allows us to use this formula. So let's try to do it. So we have f of x is equal to, let's see, 6 over 3x plus 2. All right, so this is equal to, so there's nothing we can do about the 6 right now. So I'm going to leave it there. I suppose we could pull it out, uh, but I'll leave it there for now. And we know that c equals 1 has to be our center. So this piece here needs to be x minus 1 to the n, not x to the n. See here the center is 0. We want something like x minus 1 to the n. So this piece here, this x, needs to be x minus 1. So what we do is we just write down what we want. So x minus 1. So if c was 2, we would write x minus 2. If c was negative 2, we would write x plus 2. Then we put a parenthesis here. And the 3 is in front of the x. So there's nothing we can do about that. So we put the 3 there. So now we really have 3x minus 3. So the question becomes, how do you get from minus 3 to plus 2? Well, you add 5. Boom. And let's just double check this. This is 3x minus 3 plus 5 is 2. Success. At this point, let's go ahead and pull out the 6 from the top. And let's pull out the 5 on the bottom. And the reason we pull out the 5 on the bottom is because we want this to be a 1. Right, we need to make everything match our formula very carefully. So this is 1 plus, pulling out a 5 from the 3 turns it into a 3 fifths. Right? Very, very clever and elegant trick. And we're still not there. Right? We're not there because we need a minus sign. So what we do now is we use the fact that minus and minus is plus. So this is 6 fifths times 1 over 1 minus, and then I'm going to use a bracket here for added clarity, negative 3 fifths. You see the minus and the minus give you a plus. This is x minus 1. Boom. Now you see, there's a different color, that this whole piece here is our x. So it's quite an elegant process, and the first time you try to do this process on your own, it's a what is going on type moment. But once you get it down, um, it's worth it. So now we apply the formula. So this is equal to 6 fifths infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of that whole piece to the nth power. So negative 3 over 5, x minus 1 to the nth power. So this is equal to the infinite sum. As n runs from 0 to infinity, I'm going to go ahead and move that 6 fifths inside. At this point, what you can do is you can raise everything to the nth power. You can raise the 3 to the n, the 5 to the n, and there's a negative 1 here, which you can also raise to the nth power. So typically, you do stuff like this. Negative 1 to the n, 3 to the n, 5 to the n, x minus 1 to the n. Raise everything to the nth power, and then you combine like terms. So this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. And let's see, I guess the 6 and the 3, you could combine those. You could write the 6 as um, 2 times 3. I'll leave it as 6. So we have 6 
times negative 1 to the n times 3 to the n. And then on the bottom, we have a 5 to the 1 times a 5 to the n. That becomes 5 to the n plus 1. And here we're left with x minus 1 to the n. And there it is. There is our infinite sum. And this will converge only when this is less than one in absolute value. So let's go ahead and find that. That's going to be the interval of convergence. So you just take this piece and you put it in absolute value and you set it less than one in order to find uh, the interval of convergence. When we do that, the absolute value goes away on the three fifths. You take the absolute value of negative three fifths, you just get three fifths, and so you get this. You can multiply by the reciprocal of three fifths, so which is five thirds, so that gives you this. And then when you drop the absolute value, you'll get a plus and a minus, so um, you'll get x minus one less than five thirds and greater than negative five thirds, just like that. And add one to all three sides, going kind of fast. We're really adding three thirds. Uh, one is really three thirds, so negative five thirds plus three thirds is negative two thirds. And five thirds plus three thirds is eight thirds. So in interval notation, our interval, interval of convergence will be negative two thirds to eight thirds. And that should be the final answer. So uh, it's a really elegant process um, and it's worth mastering if you study uh, complex analysis, which is like the calculus of complex valued functions, you, you do see this again. This comes up in the study of something called Laurent uh, series. So uh, this is a reoccurring idea, and it really is a beautiful technique once you understand it. Let me just go through it really quickly one more time. I'll do it up here. You have 6 over 3x plus 2. Just one more time so you see it. And I'll pull out the 6 this time. We have 1 over. You want the center to be 1, so you write down the x minus 1. You see the three here, so you know there has to be a three here. So you have three x minus three. How do you get from minus three to positive two? Boom, you add five. And then the next step, that's when you, you're down here, you pull out the five and et cetera. I feel like this step here is the most challenging. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there in the world who is trying to learn some mathematics. Good luck.